This is Brandon I. Brooks, Managing Editor with the Los Angeles Sentinel Newspaper and also the LA Watch Times Newspaper. It is my absolute pleasure today to be here with the Mayor of the City of Inglewood, Mr. Mayor James Butts. How are you doing today, sir? Good, Brandon. It's good to be here. Thank you. Thank, thank you again for your time and making yourself available. You know, you're a very busy man with all the great things going on in Inglewood right now. But not to minimize, I think this is a great opportunity for our readers, our public, and the black audience to get an opportunity to talk to you directly and mm -hmm. hear some things from your mouth. There's a lot of great, phenomenal things going on in the city of Inglewood, from the Rams to the Chargers to recent uh, talks with the Clippers and a stadium. So we're really curious to maybe be, to kick things off. If you just give us a statement about a lot of the positive things that are going on currently and speaking on the Rams, the Chargers, the Clippers, but also just development and just a lot of the positive things that have been going on in the last few years under, under your leadership. I don't think that um people can fully appreciate what's happened in Inglewood and continues mm -hmm. to happen uh, without taking a little bit of retrospective look at the city of Inglewood and what it metaphor metamorphs from into yep. what we are today. Okay. You know, I, I, I recently have taken to a hundred year history of the city, which is actually uh, five years into the future mm -hmm. and 95 years back. Yeah. If you go back to 1922, from 1922 to 1937, uh, the city of Inglewood, and most people don't know it, was one of the strongholds for the Ku Klux Klan. Mm -hmm. And uh, it uh, was that way for 15 years. And then, as it grew, it was an all-white community mm -hmm. and was first integrated just about in the early 1960s. And that's mm -hmm. when black families began to migrate into the Morningside Park area, where homes actually had covenants that didn't allow them to be sold to colored people. Mm -hmm. uh, the city continued to integrate. Uh, Jack Kent Cook moved the Lakers from the sports arena to uh, the forum that he built and opened in 1967. And then the Kings later joined and uh, it became a concert venue and it, it had quite a bit of notoriety. Um, Jerry Buss came along, bought the Lakers. They won one championship under Cook, Kent Cook and then uh, a total of five uh, under uh, Jerry Buss and while they were in Inglewood. In 1999, the Kings and the Lakers departed for Staples Center. The forum went dark. Hollywood Park, due to the ad advent of uh, offside wagering, mm. which meant you could bet your horse without being at the track where it ran at. Mm. So if you usually in Santa Anita and you didn't want to come to Inglewood to see your horse run, yeah. you could bet it there. And that sort of killed the racetrack. And so after 75 years, the track closed and Inglewood was pretty dark and desolate. Mm. I came along in... Um, February of 2011, yeah. I was elected mayor. At that time, we had an $18.5 million structural deficit, yeah. which meant we were burning on the average $50,000 a day, more than we were taking in in revenues. On a straight line expenditure rate, in about seven to eight months, we would have been cash flow bankrupt. Mm. We also had unfunded liabilities on the order of $330 million over 30 years for our lifetime medical program that was not funded by the city or an employee. We had a 17.5% unemployment rate, which was one of the highest unemployment rates in the state of California, if not the highest. Yeah. And uh, we had a, a decaying infrastructure, and we had to do a lot of things to right the ship. We wow. had to we had to cut employees. We had to put our employees on furloughs. Mm -hmm. We had to shed that lifetime medical program, and we went through a lot of internal turmoil as we right sized our organization and became more business oriented. Okay. And uh, now, where we are, our unemployment rate today is 5.5 percent, one, one of the lowest unemployment rates in the state. Um, we, our general fund has more than quadrupled, and our bond rating has been increased two times by Moody's and one time by Standard & Poor's, and we have a double-A bond rating from the near-junk bond rating we had when I took office. Uh, along the way, we negotiated with Madison Square Garden to reopen the forum, mm -hmm. and they invested 100 million, the city invested 18 million, and uh, it was a place that some would have you believe no one would come back and see concerts at ever again because it, quote, was in Englewood. Well, along the way, we've compiled the six consecutive lowest years of crime on history, on record in the city of Englewood. And not only did people come back to the forum, it's the number one concert venue in the state of California for booked events. 25% wow. more in Staples Centers. It's number two in the country yeah, and, number four in, yes. and number four in the world. Uh, we negotiated along the way with both the Raiders and the Rams 
in an attempt to bring the NFL back. Uh, we were successful with the Rams, and again, people said, and usually our competitors, that uh, no one would come to Inglewood, the NFL wouldn't come to Inglewood, that we were being used as a stalking horse for St. Louis. And uh, our competitors were the Chargers and the Raiders who were attempting to move to Carson. Well, not only did they come to Inglewood, in January of 2016, the Rams announced. In January of 2017, the Chargers announced that they too would like to join us. Uh, in June of this year, we opened negotiations with the Clippers to um, build a state-of-the-art basketball arena yeah. across the street from what will be the largest and most expensive NFL arena in the world. Okay. At, at about, it's $3 billion and counting for the cost. Yeah. Um, a hold between 80 and 100,000, depending on the standing room only. Uh, we're going to have 2,500 residential units alongside of it. Um, 300 key hotel, 6,000 seat performing arts theater, four parks encompassing 26 acres, and two lakes, a million square feet of office, and about a million square feet of uh, quality retail and fine dining. Mm. This 300 acres, to put it in perspective, is three, mm. three times the size of Century City, mm. uh, two and a half, twice the size of Disneyland. Mm. So this is going to be a, one of the most, it will be the premier sports entertainment destination in Southern California. Wow. All of our development agreements include a, a local hiring goal. Okay. And right now, right now, 19% of the employees that have, are working on the uh, construction project so far are uh, Inglewood residents. Uh, it totals 143 people that are working today didn't have jobs before. Okay. We have about 40% of the employees that work at the forum are Inglewood residents. Okay. And equally important, disadvantaged businesses, minority-owned and women-led businesses have accounted for about $150 million of the contracts that have been let so far for the stadium development. Mm. And so we feel that uh, it's not enough just to bring uh, economic prosperity along with taking care of quality of life, public safety, infrastructure renewal, um, we've improved our, our parks, our libraries, yeah. but we also feel that local people mm -hmm. should share in this tide of wealth that is coming to Inglewood. Right. And we're very proud because we are now an economic center that is evolving and it is going to bring prosperity not only to Inglewood mm -hmm. but to the South Bay and the greater Los Angeles region mm -hmm. and the money generated in this district will also result in more property taxes and mm -hmm. taxes that will go flow to the state as well which mm -hmm. does what those flow to the schools mm -hmm. so so we're very proud of not only having resurrected our city infrastructure wise and financially <coughs> and safety wise, but that we have actually become an emerging economic center yeah. for the state. Yeah. Well, I'll say that, that, was, that was a lot, and I think you laid it all out in a nutshell, <coughs> but even with, it's amazing to just hear what you all said. I think mm. even as, I'm still digesting and processing a lot, but even as you said, from the history you've given the perspective to now, mm -hmm. I think it even again, it gives you know, respect to what you've currently done under your tenure. I mean, it's mm -hmm. really phenomenal to see what Inglewood has developed. And myself, as I shared with you, you know, offline, that I was a, grew up in Inglewood. I currently live in the Merck Park, but still consider Inglewood home mm -hmm. for the most part. And to just see how it's changed and how vibrant it is. One thing I will say is there is a, a bit of concern and speaking on some of the different topics, some of the residents, and we get some of the, you know, different emails throughout the year. Mm -hmm. What are some of your thoughts of the, the term gentrification and maybe African Americans? And obviously the demographics of the city, maybe you could speak on the percentages of African Americans, Latinos, whites, but specifically just from your vantage point, how do you mm -hmm. feel residents should feel about that? Because I think everyone mm -hmm. loves the fact of the improvements and the parks, and mm -hmm. but again, how many, and you did share the percentages are, are African Americans working on the project, mm -hmm. but specifically the area, is it gonna stay, you know, residents are afraid they're gonna lose their, their space for the most part, kind of speaking on gentrification in a nutshell. Well, well Brandon, I hope that you're uh, qualifying that by saying some residents are concerned. Some, yes, yes, specifically okay. some, not all. Not okay, all, so, not so all. anyway, let, let's, let's break this down. First of all, um, Inglewood now, today, is about 51% uh, Latino, Hispanic, yeah. and about 48% black. Yeah, sure. And so from a racial perspective, it would take a bit, if you're talking about uh, the, the racial composition of the city, mm -hmm. 
changing markedly, that's going to take decades if it does happen. But let's talk about the term gentrification. Most people see that as a racially inspired term, and it is not. It's a social economic term. And what it means specifically, it was, it was meant to capture the dynamic that occurs when people of middle and upper middle class incomes, and I would, that's the caveat, incomes, mm -hmm. move into areas that were previously considered depressed properties, rehabilitate those properties, mm -hmm. and by doing so and by their presence, they raise property values. And what happens is that the socioeconomic uh, uh, band of people that formerly could rent there and, and buy there can no longer do that. And there, ergo, the term, the area gentrifies. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. it is changes in, in its uh, socioeconomic classification. And so gentrification is something that you want to have happen if you have depressed areas. But, but honestly, gentrification is not what is happening in Englewood. Right, you when you have people coming from outside the area and they're buying in our middle and upper middle class areas, and not only are they buying there, they're paying a premium to move there. Yeah, yeah. They're paying fifteen to twenty-five thousand dollars over the asking price. Properties that formerly in Inglewood set on the average on the market for six to eight months yeah. are on the market for no longer than ten days. I think housing prices have risen eighty-five percent. No, not that you're, you're a little. No, they've risen one hundred and two percent as of the. That was last year. As of the middle oh, of this year, okay. you were right about last okay. year. It was eighty-five percent last year, but as of the middle of twenty seventeen, since the end of twenty twelve. Uh, based on actual sales, uh, property values have gone up 102% in the city of Englewood. So how do I feel about it? I feel great that people want to move into Englewood, and I feel great that people are allowed to sell their houses for double what they bought them for and do as they please. No one has to sell their properties, but you know, sometimes people want to cash in. A, a, a home is the largest single asset that most people will ever own in terms of value. And so people make their choices as to whether, when they want to cash out on that asset. A lot of times, too, what's happening in Inglewood, we've given our seniors an option that they never had before. Mm -hmm. And that's if, as they get older, mm -hmm. to exercise the option to use a reverse mortgage, mm -hmm. to have income that will sustain them throughout their lifetimes wow, okay. because they now suddenly yeah. have this gift that's been provided by the English prosperity yeah. to pull money out of their homes and live comfortably that's and that's an option that's always been available to the uh, other socioeconomic uh, upper class areas that now is available to our seniors in Inglewood. Well, even speaking of some other things in Inglewood, of you, you was, last year at your state of the city, you spoke about the success of the Sentinella Hospital. You speak mm -hmm. about some of the upgrades and things going on there as well. Well, actually, you know, they, they intend to invest about $100 million in the hospital in total. Mm -hmm. They've invested about $30 million so far. They've recently renovated the, the ER. They did the facade last year, and they've been named the, the top 100 hospitals in the country as far as standards of care mm -hmm. in a number of areas, and we're very proud of Sentinella Hospital. Um, again, uh, looping back to safety, I think it's not to minimize, as you said, the crime and, and mm -hmm. how things have changed. But you specifically, your background, not a lot of people know you're a former police chief, police mm -hmm. officer, so mm -hmm. you understand that. But as, also as a black man, I think to have you in our midst, I'd like to get your thoughts on just the scope of this, this topic. And it's for us, it's not a topic, it's reality of police brutality, unfortunately, and things that are going on in America. But you speaking from your vantage point of understanding what the officers go through, mm -hmm. the police chief has to deal with, mm -hmm. but also as a black man, how do you feel about these things and what can you also share with us as an officer, just some thoughts on that? And, and specifically with the city of Inglewood, how you are working with the Inglewood PD to, to you know combat some of those issues that they may have with their citizens. Well, I spent um, 37 years in public safety. Yes. And I uh, started in Inglewood in 1972, spent 19 years there. Wow. Uh, I was uh, the, the first black motor officer, uh, one of the first two black sergeants, first black lieutenant, captain, only black deputy chief in the history of the city, yeah. um, first black officer in SWAT and to be a SWAT commander. Wow. And so, but I, I balanced that with growing up in 77th Division area, you know, in the area of Florence and Van Ness, mm -hmm. attending Horace Mann Junior High, Crenshaw High, Cal State Los Angeles. And so I know that there was, the, particularly the LAPD has a deeply entrenched history of being discriminatory towards minorities and African Americans specifically. And 
where that trend started to change is when uh, people like myself began to rise in police departments and brought that level of sensitivity to what was going on in the cultures of police departments. And uh, I'm proud to say that I had an impact on the culture in Inglewood before I left and then 15 years in the city of Santa Monica, which is one of the most highly regarded police departments in the country, particularly for its diversity and the way that it treats uh, people of color. Uh, went to the airport, had about 1,100 people working for me and ran the airport police and, and the counterterrorism operation. So I do have a great sense of, you know, what's going on, but I will tell you this, that the culture of police departments are directly, directly impacted by the quality of leadership of a police department. The most important thing that cities can do is to pick a good police chief and hold him or her accountable for outcomes. Now, you'll never ever be able to stop bad things from happening, and no matter how you screen, you will find you'll find that you end up employing people that are going to do some very bad things. The question is not that you, it is not whether or not you can ever stop a bad person from being hired, it's how you deal with them when you discover them. You will, you will get more of what you reward and less of what you sanction. Mm -hmm. And we are very proud in, in the Inglewood Police Department that we have come a long ways yeah. in terms of our, our recruitment regimen and the, uh, the culture in the organization. Our police chief, Mark Fronerata, who happens to be white, uh, was, is turning out to be probably the best police chief that we've ever had in the city. How long has he been uh, with you all? He's been, we, we appointed him four years ago. Yeah, so. Four right. years ago. And how, how long does that term just for our it, It's, so it's uh, as long as he wants, as little as we like. Oh, okay, got it, got it, got it. Um, uh, switching gears a little bit to uh, have you speak on just some of the controversial issues that have been rising up in, not only we've covered, um, with parking specifically, some residents have been concerned and I think it's been dealt with, but can you speak on some of the uh, issues with uh, uh -huh. residents parking at Inglewood Cemetery? Sure, uh, sure. Some things I, I, I'd be glad to. Yeah. Uh, we are a city in the making. Mm -hmm. Now, I want you to think about this. When the forum was entitled, mm -hmm. it was entitled with 3,500 parking spaces. For a 17,658 sellout, they need 5,000 spaces. I'm sorry, just for our readers, speaking specifically about uh, persons parking at Inglewood Cemetery after leaving past the forum venue. So I just wanted to frame uh, that. Uh, okay, exactly. And, that, and that's what we're talking yeah. about. We're talking about people parking at the forum parked for two events yeah, two. at Inglewood Park yeah, Cemetery. Gotcha, gotcha. And so, as I said, you know, we are, the forum is entitled with 3,500 spaces, needs 1,500. It was always understood that they would be able to park overflow onto the Hollywood Park lot. When the Rams bought that and did a massive development to, to uh, redevelop the entire 300 acres, that parking was temporarily unavailable. But the show has to go on. We allowed them to angle park on 90th Street, which is now Pink High. We got them parking at McCormick's Ambulance a lot because it was closed. The old Daniel Freeman parking structure, um, some some school district uh, sites, but there were nights when there were massive sellouts that they were about 300 spaces short. And so we did work between them and Inglewood Park Cemetery for them to park in the mortuary lot, okay. which is right across the street from the Forum. But as you know, people pushed the envelope and mm -hmm. some people parked on the street leading into the cemetery and that Enough. caused some people a lot of heartburn. Yeah. But the reality was is that um, the impact was de minimis. There were no graves that were defiled. My, my parents are buried there and yeah. we wouldn't have permitted that. And so, you know, that some people shot some pictures of cars parked in the, uh, on, the, uh, on the streets and, mm -hmm. you know, it's understandable. Okay. People were upset. But the reality was is that the intrusion was de minimis, and it was only a couple of events. And is it, is it currently is it going to possibly happen until other? No, actually, it won't because the time frame was until they could uh, excavate the bowl yeah. and make some land available across the street, and that land's available now. Okay, um, and also, can you speak on the uh, a recent, I think, lawsuit or that's coming from the farm towards the city of Inglewood? Actually. Actually, it's a claim for damages that they filed, and their implication is that um, I tricked them into terminating a lease 
on our property that we own. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so to understand this, uh, the form had a lease on land that the city zone that has lain fallow for between 25 and 30 years across the street on Century as a fallback for parking. Okay. And uh, at the point where there was an arrangement made so that they would have parking, that lease would be terminated. And I worked to help them arrange, to arrange a parking arrangement with the Kroenke Group so that they would have a long-term parking area. Okay. And we asked that they terminate their lease because we saw to it that there was a comprehensive agreement mm -hmm. and we asked that they terminate the lease. Mm -hmm. And they did sign off on the lease termination. Okay. They opine that we were under an obligation to say one of the things we might do is, you know, seek a basketball team, which we don't agree with. And that kind of brings me back to my point of the 100-year history. Uh, we started in 1922 with the Ku Klux Klan. The 100 years is 2022, where we have Super Bowl 56 in the city of Englewood. But here in 2017, in 2017, we have people that believe that they can tell a black and brown city the constraints of your dreams. Hmm. that they opine that we need their permission to do greater and greater things. We don't agree with that. Okay. So it's just a business disagreement, in other words, that, you know, I, well, mean, well, I mean, you're giving... This, this is my opinion, that yeah. if someone has a contractual relationship mm -hmm. and you feel that it's been abrogated, you don't file a claim for damages in a lawsuit, you go to court and you get an injunction, and you seek to enforce the terms of your agreement. Mm -hmm. You don't have to sue you get an injunction. And so do you, and even as you bring up kind of the history and just kind of contextualizing it for us from your vantage point, not that we'll be direct racial undertone, do you feel like it was somewhat because you're a black mayor trying to take advantage of you, the timing, bad press, let's make, you know, and if you don't want to speak on it. I absolutely do want to speak on it. Let me tell you this. <laughs> you have, in, I've been a public servant for 45 years. Mm -hmm. And in the worst of times, no one has ever heard me opine that I'm being discriminated against or, or, or I'm the subject of racial discrimination, although I actually have been, because I don't feel that's productive at all. So I don't, I, I don't see this as racial, but what I do see the irony, the irony that a city that within the last four years has acquired two football teams, the number one concert venue in the state, moving on to an NBA team after losing a team in 1999 yeah. that anyone would deem to say, now we've decided the constraints of your aspirations. <laughs> and I find it ironic that in a city that was a stronghold for the Ku Klux Klan, I'm talking about irony here, at this point having so overachieved, would be told, no, 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 that's enough. And we don't accept that. So it just happens to be that it's a black and brown city that has accomplished this. And so I find the irony there. See, I'm talking about irony, not, not from a racial perspective. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And I think, well, thank you for speaking on that. And to kind of bring it on home, I think, again, your legacy, and I don't want to speak legacy because you're currently breaking yeah. grounds, so let's yeah. not focus on you. Mm -hmm. But I guess in a nutshell, I think you do understand, and I know you do, as you're saying, you're striving for greatness, you got mm -hmm. to doing great things. Tell us, just as a black man in this position, doing what you do every day, and, you know, battling lawsuits on one end, dealing with victories on the other end, how do you balance it all, and being a former police officer, and maybe dealing with stress, and many people deal with, not sure, PTSD, and all types of things, mm -hmm. but how do you just, Keep it together because I think you're a great role model for not only young black men but men in general. But you in a position of leadership. Mm -hmm. you know, just tell us how does Mayor James Butts, you know, keep it all together on a daily basis? Well, first of all, the ability to compartmentalize is extraordinarily important if you if you're going to strive to do great things that require um, multiple disciplines 
and uh, an interlaced approach to what you do. You can't just decide that you're going to oh, open the forum because you're going to have to, one, you're going to have to take care of public safety first. You're going to make sure that you have a functioning water system, which we did not have. Uh, when we had a water system, it was on the verge of catastrophic failure when I came to yeah. town because we hadn't raised water rates since 2003. Mm -hmm. We were subsidizing water purchases to the tune of over a million dollars a year, another one of those things that was going to bankrupt us. And so, it isn't, you can't just sit here and say, oh, I know from my experience in Santa Monica and Los Angeles and in Inglewood that the cities that depend on their indigenous sales taxes and property taxes get by in the best of times uh, for the economy and they struggle with every recession. Mm -hmm. And so I knew that we had to get entertainment. Well, you can't just say we're going to get entertainment. Entertainment, major entertainment uh, companies are not going to come where there's high crime, a water system that is not mm -hmm. top notch a road infrastructure that can't allow people to flow there. So we had to take care of those first, and they're not going to come to a city that's on the verge of bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. So we have to take care of those things first. So when you talk about, you know, how do you deal with it first, you break it down into its subcomponents. Mm -hmm. You compartmentalize the things that you can't deal with today and focus with laser focus and uh, Herculean intensity on the things that you need to do to get for the opportunity mm -hmm. to get where you're going. You know, I always say that uh, uh, luck is where preparation meets opportunity, which means what? That you put yourself in a position mm -hmm. where when a great thing happens, you have a chance for it. Yeah. And that's what, we've, what we have done. So if you focus on the things that you need to do, mm -hmm. you really don't have time to be stressed because you're dealing with the things, the small things, that you can do day by day. Personal life outside the office. If you do have a personal life, how do you relax? Do you golf, or you know, what would be you know, what, to watch football on Sundays? If, if there is off day, how do you? How do you uh, this this job is like being a police chief. It is a minimum of sixty hours a week, mm. and um, there's always something to do on Saturday and Sunday. And so me, I'm a, a reader, as I have been since I was five years old, and uh, I read probably about nineteen papers across the country at night at one in the morning between one and three in the morning awesome. and uh, you know I definitely uh, am a junkie for uh, not politics but what's going on a, on a global level in this country yeah. and that's the way that I relax is yeah. I love morning Joe <laughs> um, and, and that's you're not getting sleep. Yep, and, yep. And, and I work out you know every morning about 630 in the morning most every morning it's about 630 in the morning okay um, and I think final question, um, again, legacy of Inglewood. For people that, not even legacy, current, you know, motto of Inglewood, what do you want people to understand of the city of Inglewood, what they're coming to, the residents that are there? From Mayor James Butt's mouth, the city of Inglewood, what is it? Uh, community pride. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, what you want is the, that everyone that works, lives, comes through the city is proud to be there for whatever period of time that they are there mm -hmm. and that your residents are proud to say I live in Inglewood mm -hmm. and we've accomplished that because you could talk about a lot of things we, we, we're a degree we're, we've reached a degree of greatness and we haven't played a single football game here or a single basketball game yet mm -hmm. but our residents are so proud wherever they go if they say I live in Inglewood they become the center of attention and so we say uh, the only thing that's changed in Inglewood is everything <laughs> And that capsulizes, you know, what's happened here. Okay. Well, thank you for your time, Mr. Right. James Butts. We You're appreciate welcome. it. And anytime you have anything to share, we hope we can, uh, you know, have another exclusive when time permits. So thank you again. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right.